Oh, that's not it. Oh. Roots and greens. Boiled dandelions, late food stamps. Every year I get a little closer to the earth. Someday it will take me back completely. You'll think of our moment of happiness and burst into tears. A great blue heron lands on a pauper snag, making me wonder momentarily how this pterodactyl got all the way here from the late Cretaceous, until I realized that this beautiful bird got here the same way the rest of us did, one egg at a time. And I have a poem in here called Testing Our Metal. It says, the tungsten mine at Patterson closed down the very day they signed the peace treaty at Panmunjom. Here's a poem I wrote for my mother. And my, one of my mother's best friends, and one of my best friends. In fact, she was my secondary mother. She used to take care of me when my mother had to work. Um, raspberry Redux. Now that the women I learned the most about Raspberry's hard work and love from, my mother and Dorothy Ivy are both dead, I pull the rapidly growing morning glory from the bases of my transplanted canes after all the other work is done and the late afternoon spring sun warms the earth in my back, slightly bent, as gloved hands grip the handle of a hole with a thin, intentional blade. I was staying in Paju with Aikyong and Jack and his daughter, and I go walking really early in the morning, and all around Paju, there are, are little old ladies in the morning, out on their hands and knees, in their gardens with their spades, you know, tending their eggplants and their beans and their peppers and their corn. I like that a lot. It, uh, it makes me happy to see people uh, work that way. Is this is called Perpendicular to the Noodle. The best Japanese go cross grain to the Keigo tradition of honorific language beginning honorific behavior. They give the American equivalent of the green weenie bird. Honda and Tanaka, in our time, automobiles and politics, chewed the system up and spit it out, made it do what they had in mind. Remember the great all-purpose Japanese verbs, kuru and suru, to come and to do. Any nominal on earth can be turned into a Japanese to-do verb. Shimasen desu ka? The great Japanese question, ka? What did you come here to do? <laughs> okay, here is the great English verbs. The great English verbs, to be and to have, reduce life to the basic question, where are you and what have you got? Which means, they are about possession and position. You must be strong if you would keep your balance. The great Japanese verbs, remember, kuru and suru, to come and to do, render Japanese interrogative life as, what did you come here to do? Which means they are about aggression and activity, the ability and the intention to move toward the things you want with style, what happens when we blend any four, any or all four of these together in dynamic juxtaposition? To be and to do something beautiful where I am with what I've got, I've got to get there first. Come where we are to have something to do. What nonverbal life would be like, we can't even imagine. We are all language. So when, when we mix these languages together, then you get real, you begin to get understanding. Like the great German poet, Goethe, he said, until you learn a foreign language, you don't understand the language. <laughs> My
Mama Lawson and Padre Speck. Poetry is written in Mama Lawson. Editorials are written in Padre Speck. Are you home from the ordeals? How about some biscuits and gravy, a little pillow for your head, and a brief nap? Maybe a bath and a new shirt. This shirt will have some lace at the collar. A bit too frilly for the army, perhaps, but your mother is taking over here, and if she's dressing you up like a girl, it's only because she's trying to make you appealing to a girl, the girl next door, to be exact. It won't take many of these home-cooked meals to have you longing for combat again. Life around the house is simply too challenging. Put the lid of the toilet seat down, take the clothes out of the dryer, knowing which clothes go into the dryer in the first place, you pass upon a time when war was the cure for this nonsense. Now this nonsense is the war, and everybody's homeless. Uh, it's called Drinking, 3.10 a.m., October the 18th, 2003. Drinking, for a long time, has been a poor man's choice to alleviate depression. Depression itself has been correctly fingered as the outward manifestation of anger unacted on, unbeknownst to the drunk, who drunk acquires courage as a byproduct on his way to nausea, hangover, and vomit. Alcohol's a wonder drug. It's a wonder anything gets done without it. One of the 18 major accomplishments civilized people point to when they add up their history, alcohol will be close at hand. Martinis, mead, the lonely and loathsome beer, the shot glass of vision. Think about the colorful and handy packages alcohol comes packaged in. The great liquor labels, whiskey, bourbon, gin, the incessant beer commercials bringing football games to cast athletes once players reduced to the rubble of consumption. This buds for you, the poets in the Anheuser-Busch ad department croon. Suck it down, hops and all, from the bottles you were never quite completely weaned off of. A great pity comes over the landscape like an undulating isobar of intensifying pressure under the influence of anger, alcohol, and confusion. If you can stay confused long enough, you might learn something. Here on Boone's farm, America became some place to strike out against the law, cooked up in caucuses by civilized types whose anger and confusion has been kept quite tightly under wraps. I have been confused all my life, but I have never been lost, Daniel Boone is reputed to have said. Lost in a world of illusion or found in a universe of fact. Choices confront men moment to momentarily, revealing character by choice as traits, tracks, tracks. Drunk or sober, left and right, bottles pile up to be refilled, recycled, recalled as parties, celebrations, ritualized remembrances, beef eater gin, G and W scotch, Jim Beam bourbon. The smoother the better, the drunker the drinker, the easier they'll be to put to sleep. Everybody in America has the world has gone to sleep one time or another. Former alcoholic president, currently addicted to murder, leaves the choir in a flight jacket just as if he were personally engaged in hand-to-mouth combat. The privileged drink better brew. The more expensive the wine, the more refined the taste. The more civilized the pretensions, the harder they are to take seriously, the less they can be cared for. Their dream images of housekeeping toss the bottles out. Out in the west, untaxed by flatscapes, the mountains, just a few old seabeds up through holes in the night sky. Climbing mountains in the dark enables one to look down on the stars as my brother Stan put it. In that light and distance, everything and nothing sacred is revealed. I 